Hey what's up guys welcome back to my channel in this tutorial I will show you how you can build a simple calculator using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. In order to show you how it works I will input one number and I will input second number and I will click the calculate button and you will see that the result we will get is 30 which is absolutely correct. Now if I change that to minus it will be minus 10 and if I multiply we will get 200 and if I divide we will get 0 0.5. The focus here will be not on the UI but it will be more on the JavaScript side because I want to show you how JavaScript works and how easy it is to use it in applications. Okay so now we are in Visual Studio Code and the first thing I will do is create my index.html file I will also create my style.css file and the JavaScript file which I will call app.js. Inside the index file I will press shift exclamation mark and tap and that will auto generate my boilerplate for my HTML code. So for the title I will say simple GS calculator and inside the body I will create a container diff which will store all my inputs, my buttons and the select. So inside the container I will say h1 simple gs calculator the same as the title and below this h1 I will create a diff which will store the label in the input. I will call this diff form group and inside this diff I will do label for first number and that will be our number one and below this I will create my input with the type of number because I want the user to be able to input only numbers no characters no text only numbers so I will say ID for this one will be first number same as the label name and now I will copy this diff and I will paste it below and I will just change the name here to number two and that will be second number the ID will be second number and below this diff I will create another diff with the class of form group And here I will create my label for operator and below the label I will create my select field. So I'll say select, name will be select and ID will be select. Inside the select I need to provide a couple of options. So I'll say option and value 1 will be plus and that will be plus. In order to save some time now I will hit alt shift and down arrow a couple of times that will create that will auto create the rest for me so for the second one I will say minus and that will be minus for the third one that will be multiply and the final one will be divide which will be the division sign. Okay perfect so far. Let's open this with live server to see how this looks like in the browser. So I will open it with live server and we see that in the browser we have our labels with the input fields type of number and we also have the operator label with the select input. So now before the end of this div here, actually after the select closing tag, I will create a button with the class of btn calculate and I will call this button calculate. But we also need a div which will store our result. So 
right before the end of the container diff, I will create another diff, which I will give a class of results. So I will say diff and we will leave it empty because the output here will be generated dynamically with JavaScript. Now we are pretty much done with the HTML code and we need to start styling this. So I will save it and have a look at it for a final time. Looks nice. Although we don't have any styling yet. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code. And uh, first of all, I will link my style sheet file. And just to test this inside the style, I will say body background black. Let's save and go back to the browser and we see now that <laughs> our body is black, which uh, tells us that the file is the CSS file is linked properly and it works. Okay, let's delete this and let's do a basic reset. So I will select everything by saying star and I will say box sizing border box margin zero and padding zero okay let's start styling the body so i'll say body and for the body the font family will be ariel helvetica sans serif the font size will be 24 pixels because i want uh, everything to be more visible and the line height will be 1.4 Okay, below the line height, we will say display that will be flex. The flex direction will be column. We will align items in the center and we will justify the content to the center. But we will also give this uh, body a height of uh, 100 viewport height because we want our container to be positioned directly absolutely in the center so I will give that a height and for the background of the con of the body I will say x decimal 333 and the color will be white okay we are done with the body let's uh, go into the container so I'll say dot container and I will say display flex. We will align items to the center. We will justify the content to the center. We will also do text align center. We will give this container a width of 50% and a height of 50%. And lastly, the flex direction will be column. Let's also style our h1. So I'll say h1 and for the h1 I want the font weight to be 500 and I also want the font size to be 40 pixels. Okay, hit save and I will go back to my browser and we see that it pretty much looks like the initial Okay, let's uh, also style our input. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code now and below the H1, I will say dot container input. And for the input, I want a padding of um, five pixels top and bottom and five pixels left and right. I want a margin of five pixels and I want the background to be hexadecimal f4 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 which is kind of light gray or lightish color so I want outline to be none and I want the border to be zero I don't want no border so below the container let's style also the select so I'll say dot container select and for the select, I want a width of uh, 
170 pixels and I want the font size to be a little bit bigger so I want 18 pixels of font size and outline will be none by the way guys uh, you are not obliged to follow me you can I will paste the source code uh, in the description below the video so you can just copy and paste it um, but uh, if you want to follow me that's absolutely fine that way I think you can uh, increase your typing speed um, so background will be f4 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 and I want a margin left of uh, 10 pixels I want no border and I want padding of 5 pixels and 5 pixels okay so lastly I think we need to style the calculate button so I'll say dot uh, btn calculate and for the bottom I want a padding of 5 pixels top and bottom 5 pixels left and right I want font size to be 18 pixels I want no outline so I'll say outline none and we want the cursor to be a pointer when we hover over the button so background will be dark same as the body color color will be white so it's hexadecimal FFF let's give this button a nice border radius of uh, 2 pixels and uh, a border of 1 pixel solid hexadecimal CCCCC which is gray I also want this button to be block level so I want it on the next line because now if we go back to our browser we see that it's on the same level as the input so I want it to be below the select input so I will say display block and I also want to give it a margin of 10 pixels bottom and top and for the left and right to be auto which will position that in the middle and the width of the bottom will be 100% so now if we hit save and if we go back to the browser we will see our styling ready and now we need to implement the JavaScript so now in the JavaScript file we need to think of how we will structure our code so if we go back to uh, our HTML file our index file in the browser we see that we need somehow to take the user input so basically we need to take what the user is typing in the first field in the second field and his choice about the select and also we have this calculate button which will trigger our JavaScript so we need to take those elements inside our JavaScript code so to do that I will create a const which I will call input1 and that will equal document get element by ID and I will get the element with the ID of first num and we can even check this uh, actually the ID here is first number okay so we just fix this and we are good to go for the moment and now we need to also take the second input so I'll say const input input 2 which is equal to document get element by ID and that's our second number below this we also need to take our select so I'll say select actually it's const select equals document dot get element by ID and that's the select ID we gave to the select input and below this we will create a result diff constant 
that will be equal to document.querySelector because we gave that a class and we will specify this class by saying dot result. Remember, this is the result div which is empty at the moment but will be filled with information after we calculate the result. And below this result div, we have to say const btn calculate equal to document.querySelector and that's the class name we gave to the button which is btn calculate, I think. And now after we have gathered all our elements that the user will interact with, we are ready to trigger some JavaScript. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to assign an event listener to the btn calculate. And I will do this by saying btn calculate dot at event listener. And inside the brackets, we first need to specify what type of event the button is going to listen for. So we'll say click and we put the comma and for second argument we have to pass our function. So in our case the, cal the function's name will be calculate result. And below this I will create the function. So to do that I'll say function calculate result which will not take anything inside the brackets. There is no argument that it's taking at the moment. So to test this, we can just say console.lock clicked. And if we save now and go back to the browser, and if we open our tools by hitting F12, and we click the button, we should get Okay, let me just uh, quickly restart the server. So here I will close this and I will go to my index file and I will open this with live server again. And now if I open my tools, okay, so now we have some kind of issue here, which is coming from, okay, we click calculate, it's not working. Hmm. And the reason for this is because we haven't actually linked our script file. So inside the HTML file, we just need to say script source app.js and hit save. And now we go back to the console and we click our button. Okay, let's, uh, let's close this at the moment. Let's open this again. And we click the button and we have clicked, you see? How many times I click the button, we get this event running. So we are good. So let's go back to our app.js file and inside this function now, what we need to do is we need to convert the user input to a number. So I'll say first const first num equals and the way we convert a string to a number is in JavaScript is by simply putting a plus in front of the input. So let me show you this. So we need to do plus input one and we need to get the value. So now if I console lock first num and save and go back to the index file and let's say we say five for the first number and we click calculate, we get this value of five in a console log. So this is working properly. And in order to prove you this, I can say console.log type of first num. And now if I save and type five again and click calculate, we get the type, which is a number. Perfect. 
Okay, so we need to do the same for the second input field. So let's say const second num equals plus input two dot value. And uh, below this now, we need to get the select option of the user. So to do that, we can just say const value equals select dot value. So to show you this, I'll just say console dot lock value. And now if I save and go back to the browser and let's say we type five for this and we choose the multiplication, we get multiply value that the user selected. Okay, so let's go back to our JavaScript. And now we need to do a check. We have gathered everything we need and we need to write some functionality. So we need to do a check now. So I'll say if our input one dot value equals empty string or input two that value equals empty string then inside the brackets so basically if the user haven't inputted anything and clicks the button the function will not run and let's do an alert here so to show you this let's do an alert and let's say please specify numbers Okay, let's click save now quickly and go back to the browser and we click the calculate button and we have this alert message which says please specify numbers. So the only way to avoid this is by typing numbers and selecting an operator. So now we don't get this alert which is good and for an else inside this if statement we will put our logic so we will use switch which is an elegant way instead of using multiple if else statements so inside the switch we will check for the value and first case will be plus so we have a, we have a case that the user chooses the plus and for this case the only thing we need to do is that we need to do a resultive dot inner HTML equals first num plus second num. And then we need to get out of this case by saying break. So the break keyword is finishing up this case. So to test this now, Let's quickly go back to our index.html file and we say two for the first number and we say five for the second number and we click calculate and we get seven for a result. Perfect. Let's implement the rest. So basically below the break, let's do another case of minus. Remember those words plus and minus are coming from the values we have given to the option. So if you notice, the names are exactly the same as we have given here for plus, minus, multiply and divide. So for the minus case, what we need to do is we need to do resultive dot inner HTML equals first num minus second num. And then we need our break below this we have case multiply which is result div dot inner html equals first num multiplied by the second num and we need our break and then we have case divide let me just check if that was the same yes it's divide and we have 
result div dot inner HTML equals first num divided by the second num. And we need our break as well. And pretty much I think we are done with this. So let's save and go back to the browser. And now for the second, for the first number, let's say we want the number to be seven and the second number to be two. And we have to test this. So let's check, uh, let's check uh, first the plus sign. So we click calculate, we get nine for the result. If I change to minus, we should get five. And if I change to multiplication, we get 14. And if I divide, we get 3.5. Exactly how it is. So that's it, guys. I hope that you uh, learned a lot from this uh, uh, video and um, you had a clear idea of how JavaScript works and how easy it is to be implemented in applications like this. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.